Hello friends, welcome back to Biscuita. We are in the woods and we have cut down a ton of trees. I know you can't really tell just by looking at it, but there is a hole here. Let me get my pointer. There is a whole section in here. Maybe I should just pull up the map too while I'm at it. Kind of this whole area that's bound by the road and the railroad tracks. We have cut down every single tree over in here except these two right here we have hauled a whole bunch of trees to mark it off cam uh, part of it uh, with just more testing of some of the errors I've been having with the scripts that we've been using I think I have those finally drummed out um, <laughs> fingers crossed so I wanted to come back in game here to show kind of what was done and to haul a little more timber to market. I'm really, really pleased because we've been able to pay down our debt quite a bit. We had a loan of 200,000. So you know what? I am really, really liking hauling uh, wood. It seems to be quite lucrative. So I see kind of why the instructions that came with the map suggested heading into the woods, you know, in between, in between the crops. And at some point, we got to get back to regular farming. <laughs> we can't stay in the woods the whole time. But it is, uh, it is good to get our loan down, although we're paying next to nothing for, for interest. So that is helpful. Actually, I could pay even a little bit more off. But you know, I started uh, as I've been testing things, as I've been hauling them to market. Uh, you may realize, uh, remember that over at the sawmill, there is an output for wood chips. And I pulled open the map, and for the life of me, I could not figure out where wood chips were taken. And I don't know if it's just an oversight by the mapper. Uh, you know, after all, I did have to modify the map just to bring in the cuttable trees, or if he hoped that someone would maybe bring in a placeable uh, cell point for the wood chips or some other mod, you know, that would, uh, would otherwise deal with them. Don't know, and it doesn't ultimately matter. But I figured, well, if it's outputting wood chips, we probably should have a place to uh, put them so why don't uh, I know that reddit head on out of game why don't we just take a pause for a moment and I want to show a couple things that uh, that I did here kind of off cam uh, obviously I have the scripts over here for the load securing I think I have that all nailed down um, just by fixing the mod that I was using here I can't remember if I've described this I'm having it look to see if the load is secured before it just allows loading or unloading. You know, it it, uh, it does not want the load to be secured if you're going to be pulling logs out of the trailer or putting them on. Period. End of story. So I kind of made it, I hope, a little bit more workable with the uh, load securing script which is really very valuable so I tried to do that I came up here in the input bindings and it isn't even going to show the option to load or unload if you're moving or in motion because that means if you're in motion your load is going to be secured you know it probably still would be better if we came over to the load securing script and we made it manual, meaning we created an input binding that would allow us to lock or unlock the load. I know some mods were designed that way back in the day, um, but I'm gonna leave it the way it is for the moment, and uh, we'll see if uh, if it behaves. And so far, it has. It's uh, there also was some other things that it was doing. Oh, you know, I moved removing it from the trigger, you know, doing the at before I moved it in, in accordance with physics. That was something I was looking at. Um, I was checking the table, like this is in the case of unloading, the table for the, the secured load. 
and because when you secure the logs it is in a table and i figure well let's remove the it make sure it's removed from the table if it finds it in there before you just throw it off to the side so i did everything i could or at least that i could think of to make sure we uh we ran into as few a conflicts you know as 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 we could anyway that's kind of on loading unloading still in this bail attacher script that we modified to handle the logs another thing i was getting weary of is the chainsaw and by the way i am not knocking the mod i mean this is still an outstanding mod when you see all the work that they put into here i mean just for example this chainsaw this lua file this is just to run the saw you know it's uh it's almost 800 lines of code so just an amazing amount of work and, and by the way, I can't remember if I mentioned this before. When you look up here at who authored it, I know Raftnix. I, I know that's a common name I've seen. He's a popular Lua scripter or was. I don't know if he's still in it. And Fructor, um, this fella went on to work at Giants. Um, his name was Emil or Emil. And those that have done Lua scripting or have... have uh, have gone to the Giants Developer Network, have encountered a email on there. He was the one that would come on there to answer questions of modders and what have you. But anyway, his modding name and probably how he caught the attention of the Giants was Fructor. But just 800 lines of code just to run the chainsaw. So just an amazing amount of work. I'm definitely not intending to knock it in the slightest. But one of the things I was growing a little weary of was having to refill my saw after cutting down and limbing and bucking logs for probably four trees. That's all I could do. And you know what? That's probably more than you could do in real life, you know, with one tank of gas. You know, it would, depending on the size of the tree, you might go through, matter of fact, I know you'll go through multiple tanks of gas with a chainsaw trying to get everything cut up. But hey, this is a game. So here's what I changed in it, or I, I changed it here in the uh, uh, Lua file, and then I also changed it in the XML file. Um, you know, I first changed it here. This was 0.005 was the usage. And then I figured, well, if I'm going to make the usage take less then I want to make it cost more so I divided it by 10 here I multiplied it by 10 to kind of keep us in parity but as it turns out that tiny tweak of the code made no difference this is a utils get no nil meaning it's looking in the XML file for a value for usage and if it doesn't find it it'll it'll give it the value here well as it turns out it's uh, definitely over here uh, capacity of the tank was only 0 0.8. 0 0.8 liters is probably pretty accurate when I think about the chainsaw I've typically used here around my home. Uh, 0.8 liters is probably spot on. But I, <laughs> I didn't want to have to stop cutting just to go refill the saw, so I gave it a tank capacity of 5 liters. There is no way that <laughs> we would have a chainsaw that large. Although in their uh, Lua file, you know, they said if it didn't have a tank capacity, give it one for five liters. Uh, but anyway, so I bumped up the size of the tank. I bumped up the usage, and I think this is fuel price. I just left that alone. Uh, although maybe I should have added a zero there. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, oh, and then I put kind of the form of values in here. So now the end result of this is I can now chainsaw a long, long time, cut trees to my heart's content. I don't have to go find the chainsaw box to go refill the fuel. And I know I was belly aching a number of times too that when I would haul the logs to add collision, the camera that has collisions on it would drive me nuts. You know, when you're, you're, I typically am in third person mode, so I am up behind the tractors or whatever equipment I'm driving, usually behind. Sometimes I go in front, but most of the time I'm kind of following it from the rear. 
you know, just the way the camera is positioned. And depending on where, how low to the map I go, or if I zoom in, a lot of times that annoying feature of uh, zooming in, well, I call it annoying. Actually, I, I really like it in other respects. You know, if you're backing a trailer into a shed, say, you know, you kind of want it to zoom in so you can constantly keep your eye on your equipment, you know, without the collisions on the camera. Now, when I back into a shed, I'm going to see the shed. I'm not going to see the equipment that's inside it because it isn't showing me the collisions. But for purposes of following the tractor that is, is pulling the trailer with logs, I just, I wanted to be able to see the tractor and everything and not have it get all janky on me and go back and forth you know where the camera zooms in zooms back out you know just kind of causes a problem so i went on a search for the no collision camera mod i couldn't find it you know it's getting really hard out there to find lots of the old fs13 mods that we had or or at least some of them I know you could, there are a handful of sites out there that still have it for these old games. And, and if it's scarcely there, if, you know, for Farm Sim 13, you know, I don't know where that leaves Farm Sim 11 and before. You know, a lot of those old inks having mods that were popular back in the day, they're starting to fail, they're broken. And a lot of those mods, all that creative effort uh, is being lost, which is really kind of sad. But anyway, I couldn't locate the no collision camera mod, so I figured, well, I'll just make one of my own. So I grabbed, not really, I just, I grabbed the one that I had for Farm Sim 11. I changed the desk version to 9, which is for Farm Sim 13. And that's really the only change that I made. You know, the script is really, really simple. Um, this is what was in there for Farm Sim 11, and you know what? It, it appears to be working. I <laughs> I don't know anything about these functions here, but this is in the Lua code for getting the collision distance, I presume, for the vehicle camera, just like it says, and he's returning false and a negative one. Whatever that is doing, it is helping. I've, I've tested it in-game. I can now trail the camera right behind the uh, tractors it's pulling the, the trailer with logs and I can put it at any angle I wish and it, it is not showing the collisions like it did before so kind of improvised dragged a new mod in there and then as I commented a little bit ago there was no place you know let's go this is in the map editor now let me zoom in to uh, right over here this is where we've been taking the logs this is a sawmill and of course the logs go in right at this area here a little conveyor belt carries them in and right in here somewhere inside the building is a cell trigger for the logs you know eventually when they get in there they get sold and of course we make money but at the same time outside of the sawmill that there is a pile accumulating here of sawdust uh, or, or rather, wood chips. Let me see if I can find it here. Yes, cell trigger is for the logs. That's on the inside of the building. Let me see. Is this a tip trigger? Mm -hmm -hmm. Yeah, okay. It's highlighting it here. And... Yeah, so it's coming out this conveyor belt. There's probably some particle animation. But it's accumulating a pile and so we can pick it up here and it's gonna pump out wood chip but like I say I couldn't find anywhere in the map not in the surrounding area I searched high and low I opened the map i3d file in a text editor and I did a search for wood chip and you know what the only place that I found wood chip was right here so this is kind of, uh, you know, it, maybe you don't make nothing on wood chips. I don't, I don't know how this will be. I don't know if it's an oversight by the mapper. I, I just don't know. Um, but suffice it to say, there is nowhere, no place where we could take wood chips. 
Now the trouble is, with a map like Beskide, there is no flat surface anywhere, and the map author has so jam-packed it with loads of detail, and you know some map authors will leave flat areas in the map in various places where the player can put down what are called placeables you know to add a factory or some type of mod to the map well there just there aren't any areas to cleanly do this i mean okay maybe you could put a placeable here if it would let you and it probably see these are all 3d objects down here so it probably wouldn't even let you but if we got rid of the road okay there'd be a flat area but but you know what this is the parking lot for the church you know you can't you can't really just remove it from here without changing the ambiance you know that the map author intended for this particular area and so and, and okay, so maybe you say put it in a field, but every single one of these fields has some kind of slope on it, which is really cool. I, I love it because I enjoy doing hillside agriculture. But again, it means that if you try to put a placeable on the slope, you're going to have one end of the placeable touching and the other end is going to be high, high and dry kind of up in the air and it's going to just look strange. So I looked in town, even over here. Oh, you know, you kind of zoom out and you say, oh, here's an area over here. And then you zoom in and oh, all the clip distances and all those objects kick in. And you say, oh, this is already occupied. One thought I had was, you know, apparently there's a place here. This is the, uh, what is this, the store marketplace or whatever. I, I think you can come in here and you can... What is this? There's a trigger here to sell liquid manure and solid manure. So I thought, well, you know, it'd be really, really easy just to add wood chip on here and I could add another price multiplier, whatever I put on it. And voila, I now have a place to take wood chips. I could even maybe take another step. I could duplicate the pile here, turn one of them into wood chips. But I opted not to do that. Um, I don't know. Part of it is you, you, <laughs> you wouldn't sell manure in the same place you would sell wood chips. I mean, that just didn't make sense. And plus, I, you know, in order to do it right, I mean, I'd need to find texture for the pile to make it wood chips. Anyway, I just finally opted to say, no, I'm not going to do that. So what I did is I went to check out the forest mod to say, do you have something in the mod that does something with uh, wood chips? And this is why, I mean, this is one reason why I say this is such an outstanding mod. You know, when you crack this thing open, it looks simple and unimposing, but there's a ream, reams of scripts in here for the various parts that they have. Uh, along with all the multiplayer program. I mean, it just goes on and on. But then there's machinery in here. Of course, those are all the trailers and everything. Then there's objects, and I'm like, hmm. So they have, I mean, obviously the trees that we put in here. The, here's a sawmill that I know we add up there. There's a wood chip storage. Well, I don't really want to put it in a storage. I want to sell them. So then I looked up the bioheat plant, and finally I found something where uh, the wood chips can be disposed of. So I took that object, it has its own i3d file, it's its own model, and I carved out a small section on the map. You know, this is the store where you buy things, and this was kind of just an open hillside, and I just kind of carved out a little spot and put it right here. And you know what appears? I need a loader or something to get it into here. I don't know that I'm done here yet. You know, I may want to just lower this box into the ground and turn it into a type of, uh, oh, similar to you, like driving over the grate, you know, where you would dump the grain into it and it would put it into storage just to make it easy. So if it comes off of a trailer, you know that it goes in there easy and I don't have to get a front loader over here but for the moment I just put it into the map as is and kind of prettied up the area 
made this dirt path and so forth and so on. Never imagining that at the same time I totally broke the uh, the trees thing again. And when I, after I saved this thing and I got in game, I was thrilled. You know, now I had a place to take wood chips. I was going to go back and do a bunch more logging. You know, and I picked up some logs and I headed to market. <laughs> And all of a sudden, I asked myself, where are all the trees? All I could see was just these foliage trees. All of the timber, the cuttable trees, of course, they don't look like this in game, had all disappeared. And it's like, oh, mercy. So we went through this one other time. And so I had to pull some maneuvers here. I mean, I pulled up the scripts, you know, that we had been using uh, this one here to plant the trees. Oh, you know what? I bet it has it in there. I better take that out, by the way. Just to see if the script was working, because that probably flooded my log. And scoured the uh, uh, save game files. Like, I know they're here. You know, I look at this all in here and see these are all the growing trees. And it's like, I know they're here. And so one of the things I did as I was going in game and testing it, one of the things I did not do was save it, save the game, when I couldn't see any of the trees. Because if I had, if I had done that, I would lose all of this precious data, which uh, has, has all the info of the positions of the trees. Somehow the script couldn't find this on create loaded object and it was coming in there and seeing nil. But I know it's here. I don't know how it got off. I suspect it had something to do with adding another on create object. I I really don't know. All I know is it broke. So to unbreak it, here's what I did, and this is just a suggestion. You know, some other time, if if you do something in a map that breaks your save game. First off, make a copy of your save game before you start messing around with it, or at least the part of it that you know you're going to need to get it back. So I made a copy of this whole file, this vehicles XML, to preserve this data. Then I said I'm going to replant every doggone tree. So do we remember this script? You know, this language in here, this is the one that's embedded in the map that looks at all of these tree locations and it replaces them with a cuttable tree. But it only is going to do it if it's right at the beginning of the map. You know, so it's looking for travel distance to be zero. Well, I don't want to start over the map. I don't want to just go edit my travel distance. So what I did to redo this is say, okay, let's just comment this out. So I went, I saved it. I loaded up the game then, and it ran this whole script, which means it replanted every tree on the map, including all the ones that I had uh, already cut down. Then I saved the game, which means it updated the vehicles file by putting all the trees in here. And then I said, ah, 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 I got out of the game and then I went to my copy, which is in this one over here. See, this is a copy of the vehicle's XML. I went down here to all my trees. This is the true data. I copied all of this and I superimposed it over all of these and just replaced it. And then when I opened the game back up, it had all the trees in the proper spot uh, once more. So I kind of had to jerry rig the thing, if you will. Oh, shoot. Here, let me get it right. There we go. And fix it one more. And this caused me a bunch of uh, puzzling time on it. But be that all as it may, I promised last time we would try to cut some timber. So you know what? It looks like it's getting cloudy in here. But I'm going to try to cut down just a couple more trees in here. Let me make sure I've got plenty of fuel. So I'm going to go over here. There's just two more trees to cut down. I'm going to try to lay these out here real quick and get ready to pick them up and head to market. I don't know what point, you know, I'm going to try to... Oh, there we go. Oh, for goodness sake, don't land. <laughs> 
It's a good thing this isn't real life. Alright, so here in real life, if we were cutting this, first off, this is a little dangerous. You know, we see there's kind of a, a, a depression in the ground, so it's sitting over an open span. In real life, we would cut this from underneath because we don't want to bind ourselves off. So I'm going to put it down here just for a little nod to realism. Because as you see, it pinches kind of on top. We can hardly see the seam. Here, do we got another here? We're spanned again, so we probably would do the same. Actually, we wouldn't. You know what? In real life, I can almost hear my grandfather chewing me out. He always would yell at me from the back of the cat when we cut timber on Lone Oak to tell me to get on the uphill side of the log. So we'll start at the bottom here. This one will collapse down. If we've got some lemming to do, we'll just kind of skim up the tree and take care of it. Or try to. <laughs> sure wish it was that easy in real life. But that's kind of what, here's another span underneath. In real life, that's kind of what we would walk up the tree uh, typically walk on it until we couldn't walk on the trunk anymore cutting limbs you know kind of as we went through it all right I think that is that tree let's try to take down this or one I'm just gonna try to aim for the open spot over there just a brilliant mod Of course, in real life, we would never cut it quite like this at the at the butt of the tree. We would typically notch it. We would make a face and notch it. You see, we also above. Oh, yeah, we got another one. This one here, you might do a little from the front, a little from the bottom. It isn't a huge dip. All right, it's moving a little bit. I hear a train going by up there. Just gonna skim up the tree. Take care of this. All right, we got it. Oh, this one is definitely spanning over a gap, so we'll cut from the bottom. And you can see the reason we cut from the bottom. Oh, I, I can't kneel down. I'll do the best I can to get underneath, but it's not letting me kneel down. But the reason we don't cut from the top in these cases is uh, it would pinch the saw blade and trap our saw. And this one's laying flat, so we can get away with cutting from the top. Most of them we would cut from the top. All right, and that takes care of the last two trees to cut in this area. Like I say, most of the rest of, in this small section are already cut. We'll go deposit our saw over here in the thing. Let's fill it up with gas real quick. I can do that. there was a fuel you know what I probably have so much fuel that it isn't letting me because I expanded the size of the tank so let me just drop it off and we'll go over here we'll get our trailer our auto loading trailer and our tractor here like I say some tweaks were made it looks like I still need to make a couple more tweaks to the trailer it's kind of a uh, I'd like to be able to, to see it here, over here as kind of an attachment to the tractor, but it's missing whatever in the mod would tell it to do that. Alright, some controls are going to disappear as we get over there because we're moving, or at least they're supposed to. Um, I don't remember how fast we can move without... Uh, let me just get right here. I've also been trying to stay at a stop before I load logs. So there we got some in there. I turned off the loading. Sorry, I'll drive right through a tree here. Let me get the rest of the pieces. Get those two logs on there. And I've been trying to keep it to just two logs per load. I can maybe haul a little bit more but I don't know what the weight limit of this particular tractor would be. I'm just trying to be a little bit realistic. But see how I can go behind the tractor now and it doesn't zoom me in or zoom me back. So let me load these over here and grab those. All right, turn it off. Get up here, take these two trunks. All right. 
right. Okay, we'll turn off loading. You know, there probably would be room for a little bit more, but I'm going to just head to market as is. So, here we go. And I'm pretty sure when I get out on the open road... Yeah, look at that. I had a bounce on my trailer. None of them logs are, are bouncing. And, and so you see up in the... There's a bell. Up in the F1 menu, we... Uh, it has turned off the ability for me to load or unload right now. I can still show the unload area, but it won't let me unload literally. So I'm going to get this up here. I'll be right back as soon as I get to the sawmill. All right, folks, here we are heading into the sawmill. We'll get this unloaded. Unloading anymore is a fairly simple and clean process. This is how I typically do it. I got my little trigger out there that shows kind of where they're going to land, and I just try to make sure that lines up on the air belt. I can drive straight, that is. Get that on there. Probably should tip up so I can see it. Back in. That looks good enough for government work. And now that we are stopped, we have the ability to unload logs. So here we go. We'll send a few off. Try not to send too many all at once. Because I don't want them to fall off the conveyor the opposite direction. And as you can see, our cash down there is going up. 25,000. It'll continue going up so we sell stuff off. Those are the last ones. In they go. Alright, close to 30,000. Now, I'm pretty sure we came here before. I just wanted to show one more time the pile of sawdust that is accumulated, or, or wood chips rather, that is kind of over here on this end. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> we had a pile of sawdust. You know what? I think I wrecked the pile of sawdust. It was 28,000 and some change, so uh, you know what? I probably need to replenish that on the save game file because that totally got blipped out when I had some trouble with the trees. So I'll fix the ad for next time, but then uh, I'm going to need to get some uh, different equipment to figure out what to do with it. But for the moment, thank you so much for coming along as we did a little more logging. Hope you are enjoying Mesquite as much as I am, and I hope you have a wonderful day. I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.